welcome back to my channel. So when I made my puff dress tutorial, I kind of jokingly said that I might go back and make the shorter version of the dress, but I had a lot of projects lined up when I said that, so I wasn't fully sure if I was actually going to get around to it. But then when I was ordering all my fabric to make my prom dresses, I got these two fabrics to go together as the overlay and the lining, and I was like, these fabrics do not work together at all. So what I did instead is I ordered fabric and I made it into this blue one over here. And I decided to keep these fabrics and turn them into different projects. So this one we are saving for later and I'm really excited about it. And we're going to be using this peach one that I got today. I also went back to the website and got it a lining that matches a little bit better. And so the fabric that I'm working with today is seven yards of this crystal organza in the peach color. And seven yards is a lot of fabric for this project. But like I said, I ordered it kind of as a mistake. So that's what I'm working with. And then this is three yards of a crepe back satin also in the peach color. And like I said, I already made the puff dress obviously, but I made a different version of it than like the one that was really trendy at the time. But I also have some improvements that I wanna make this time. I want to make this dress much poofier than this one was. Cause this one was like very elegant and it had a cute little ruffle and it was very, dainty, but I want this one to just be like obnoxiously puffy, maximum puffage. So we're going to see exactly how puffy I can get it, but I'm really, really excited because I think it'll just be really fun to wear. And I was also thinking about doing the super short waistline, um, even though I kind of ripped on it in my last video because I think it's unflattering and I still think it's unflattering, but I kind of wanted to do it just to try it out anyway. But I did a poll on my Instagram and I asked you guys if I should go for the longer one or the shorter one. And I was honestly surprised that 75% of you guys really wanted me to do the long version. So I'm going to do that one instead, which is honestly probably a good thing because I'll probably wear it more that way. So this dress is obviously going to be a pretty similar design, especially in the bodice. But I'm really excited because the skirt construction should be pretty different. So I'm really excited to just go cut out all these pieces and see how fluffy I can make it. These pattern pieces for the most part are pretty similar to the last puff dress, but if they are not exactly the same measurements as the last one, that's just because I draft all of my own patterns. So every time that I draw the pieces, they always end up a little bit different. And if you guys ever need help cutting out your own pattern pieces, I have a video on my tips for adjusting my patterns that you guys can check out. But for the pattern, here are the front pieces. And for all the pieces you cut out of the lining, you're basically going to make half of them out of an organza as well. This is the back piece, again, same deal. And here is the sleeve piece, and this is definitely the biggest sleeve I have ever made. Um, but for this one, there's no lining, you're just going to cut four out of the organza fabric. And then this is the skirt lining piece. And this time I decided to make it a full circle skirt so we can make it super fluffy. And I was able to cut this piece on the fold of the fabrics, but if your fabric isn't big enough to do that, you could just cut two of these pieces and sew up one side. And this is the organza skirt piece. And this piece is also pretty gigantic. And I decided to give this piece a kind of rounded shape because I like to make my life more difficult. But if you just wanna make this piece a regular rectangle that is 64 inches long, it'll work pretty much the same and be a little bit easier. And then these pieces are just little strips you're going to cut on the bias of the fabric. And the bias just means the diagonal. And we're going to use this to make bias tape a little bit later and I'll show you how to do that. We just cut them on the bias so that they have this slight stretch to them. Honestly, this year has been like the year of crepe back satin and crystal organza. So you guys have already heard me say this like a million times, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to baste our crystal organza to the crepe back satin. And on the last puff dress, I used two layers of the organza because the color didn't match quite as closely as these ones do. But for this one, I'm just going to use one to get a lighter color. So I'm just going to take one satin piece and one organza piece, and I'm going to pin it all together and just sew around the edges. And it's really important to get these as flat as you can so that they line up perfectly. So you can very carefully iron out your organza because it does crease pretty easily. You should make sure that you're using a very low synthetic setting so it doesn't melt. And in case you don't know, basting is just the longest stitch on your machine and it's a temporary stitch to hold these two pieces together. And you're going to sew around the center piece, the two side pieces, and two back pieces. And then for the sleeves, I'm also basting around them, but there's no lining piece, so I'm just putting two sleeve pieces together and basting around them. The first piece I think I'm going to work on with this project is actually the back pieces because I want to put the dart in first. So I'm just going to fold it in half, making the side with the little cutout slightly shorter, and then I'm going to just make a dart. And I'm going to sew that on all of the back pieces, including the ones without the organza on top. And now we're just going to assemble the whole bodice by taking the center piece, sewing the two side pieces to it like this and then opening up these side pieces and sewing the back pieces to it. And the curve of the side piece and the curve of the back piece are the parts that go together because that is the armhole. And we're going to be sewing all the lining pieces together the exact same way. Now 
We now have the bodice piece and also the lining bodice. And today we are going to be working on the sleeves. The first step on this is we need to sew up the sides together, but we need to do French seams on the sleeves because we don't want this organza to unravel like crazy. So I'm going to just sew them wrong sides together first, cut the seam really short, flip it so that the pieces are pretty sides together, and sew it again. And that should fully encase our seam. Now we're going to sew the sleeve that we just sewed around the little armhole on the bodice. So this is the bodice piece that has all of the organza on top. I'm going to take the bottom seam and match it up to the side seam and pin it in place. And now I'm just going to sew around this curve, stopping about half an inch away from either side of the top. <laughs> the giant sleeves always look so silly when they're like this. <laughs> To keep working on the sleeves, the next thing you need to do is add bias tape around the top. And the way you make bias tape is just taking that little strip that I showed you guys that I cut on the bias of the fabric and by folding both of its edges in until you get this little like casing piece. The way that I'm going to go about finishing up the sleeve is by right where we stopped sewing it, I'm going to take our bias tape and I'm going to put our folded edge right where we had the seam and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to pin this all around the sleeve until we get to the other side. But where we stop and start, I'm also going to make this edge folded up so that it already is a finished edge. And when you're sewing bias tape, you just wanna sew right on that folded edge. And now that there's bias tape all around the top edge, I'm just going to trim down the organza edge a little bit. I'm also going to put a little notch into the organza layer where we put this folded edge, because on this side, we're going to need to turn the organza this way, and on this side, we're going to need to turn it the other way. So this just lets it have that mobility. And now to finish up the raw edge of the sleeve and also make a casing for the elastic, I'm going to take our bias tape and flip it over to the other side, flip it down again, and then sew on the other edge of the bias tape all the way around. And I think I'm also going to sew down the other side of the bias tape just to make this piece lay flatter. Now that the casing is finished, I'm going to take some very stretchy elastic and I just put a safety pin through one end and I'm just going to thread this through from where we started the casing. And now I'm going to try this on and make sure that the sleeve is comfortable, and then I'm going to put a few stitches on the edge of the casing to hold in the elastic. These sleeves are absolutely gigantic, and I am so in love with them. And now we need to put elastic down the bottom part of it, and on the last puff dress when I did this step, I used a thicker elastic because the dress was white, so it didn't matter that you could see the elastic through it, but this time, because obviously it's a peach color and I have white elastic, I'm going to use a thinner one so that you won't see it as much. And I just measured all the way around from the bottom three inches in and I put pins all around it. So I'm going to sew two parallel lines all the way around so we can make a casing for the elastic because the sleeves are already two layers thick so we can just put it right through. The trick with this though is because they're sewn together down the bottom seam, I'm just going to leave a space on either side where we can put the elastic through and sew it off. Then to hold it in place, I'm just going to do a few stitches right over the ends of the elastic. And then the last thing to do on the sleeves is to hem them. <laughs> These sleeves are so huge! Now that both of the sleeves are finished, we can attach the lining to the bodice. I'm going to lay out the front piece down flat and I'm going to take our lining piece and I'm going to just pin all of the tops together. And because we stopped sewing the sleeves up here by the top, I'm going to fold that part in so we don't sew the sleeve. I'm going to just pin it in place. And then I'm going to take the lining fabric and kind of just put it on top and sew around the sleeve. I'm going to sew right across the top until we get to the seam where we stopped. From there, I'm going to pivot and sew right down the seam where we sewed the sleeve. Sew all the way up to the other side, pivot again, and then sew right across the back. So we're basically just sewing all around the top edge and the armholes. We just want to make sure that we are only catching the underarm part of the sleeve. The bodice is now fully lined, and we're moving on to the gigantic skirts. <laughs> so I cut six of these skirt pieces, which means that there are going to be three layers of this skirt, and I did that to make it extra, extra fluffy. So I'm going to take two skirt pieces and sew them down either side using French seams until we have three individual skirt pieces. 
We now have all three of our skirt pieces, and I just went ahead and I cut a nine inch slit down the back of all of them. And the next step is to finally start ruffling all the skirts. And normally I would sew all of the pieces together and just ruffle them all at the same time. But because we're trying to get this dress as fluffy as possible, um, I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to ruffle them one at a time and then layer them on top of each other because I think theoretically that should give us more fluff. I'm just going to take one skirt at a time and put two basting stitches all across the top edge. To finally ruffle the skirt up, I marked out the side seams of the skirt lining and I'm going to put one of the organza layers on top and pin the side seams together. And I'm also going to put the backs together as well. And to gather the organza layer up, I'm just going to pull on two of the basting stitches and it'll just gather all of the fabric. And after you get the first layer looking all nice and pinned down, you can add on the second and then the third layer. And after I finish getting them all nicely gathered, I'm just going to put a basting stitch all across the top edge to put everything finally together. Whew, that's a lot of ruffling. All of the skirt layers are together and ruffled and this skirt is absolutely ginormous. And I also took the bodice and I tried it on and I put pins where I want the finished length of it to be. Um, and at this point you guys can make it really really short if you want to go for the super tiny bodice line or you can make it on the longer side. Um, I think I'm going to do a little bit shorter than my typical but still pretty long. So I'm just going to cut this straight across making it nice and straight and then I'm going to pin the skirt all the way around the organza layer of the bodice, not the lining one yet. And now that these pieces have been sewn together, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch down the waistline to help with the fraying. Okay, now the next step is probably the most difficult one to explain, but I don't think it's all that hard to actually do. So what we're going to be doing with the next step is attaching the lining, which hasn't been sewn down to anything, to the skirt. But the way we want to do this so we get a finished edge is by taking all of the skirt fluff and putting it inside of the bodice, and then bringing the lining down and sewing it to the other side of the bodice. So basically these are the front seams of the bodice here and I want to bring the front seams of the bodice and match those all up. So I'm going to pin these here and so right now this is the bodice and all of the skirt fluff is inside of this. So I'm going to keep guiding the bodice all the way around matching up all of the seams and pinning it in place. And I know that it looks kind of funny, but I'm just going to sew all the way around this right on top of the stitch that we sewed to sew the skirt to the other bodice piece. And now we're going to turn the whole skirt right side out through the back part where the zipper is going to go later. You know, I just now realized the slits that I made in the back of the skirt were supposed to go all the way down so we can turn it out at this step, and for some reason, I did not do it that way. So I'm just going to cut the skirts all the way down so we can actually turn it right side out. And now you should be able to turn your dress out. Ta-da! And the dress is fully lined. Now because we had to cut the back of the dress open so we could turn it right side out, I'm going to stitch up the satin layer of the skirt, making sure to leave 9 inches still from the waistband so we can put in a zipper, and I'm going to do the same thing with all of the organza layers, making sure to do French seams. It is finally time to put the invisible zipper in, and I did just go ahead and baste all of the organza layers of the skirt to the lining layers so that it'll be a little bit easier to put the invisible zipper in. So I'm just going to very carefully line everything up and insert it. And again, to help with fraying, I'm just going to zigzag down all of the fabric by the zipper. And the last step on the dress is to hem all of the individual layers of the skirt, which is going to take a very long time. I just put it on my mannequin and I cut all the layers so they are the same length and then I'm going to do a rolled hem on all of your organza layers and just a regular hem on the lining layer. And it's totally fine if you just want to do a regular hem on all of them, I'm just a little bit lazy. <laughs> And here is the finished dress. I really 
really, really love how this dress turned out. It was just so much fun to wear and it has like the best twirl factor like ever. Even though the pattern was pretty similar to the last puff dress, I think that they both have really different vibes and I really love both of them. The last one had a very elegant, almost ethereal vibe that I loved, but this one's a little bit more like fun and like bubble gum, if that makes sense. And I honestly, I cannot choose a favorite between the two. I really hope you guys give this dress a try and if you do, you can always send me a picture on Instagram. I love to see them. And you can also subscribe if you want to see more of my content every Friday. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week and I will see you guys next time. Bye!